Hello, this is a course introduction video for both uh, my Math 2413 and Math 2414 Cal 1 and Cal 2 courses. Uh, for efficiency, I decided to combine them into one video. Uh, the basic premise will work the same for both courses, so I uh, figured might as well just do it in one video. So at this point, uh, the screen you're looking at now uh, would have been you know, you've got, you. if you're new to D2L, you completed the student orientation, you go to LSC online, you find your list of courses, and then whether you're Cal 1 or Cal 2, you click on that course. Now, just for a second here, I'll jump over to student role so you can see what that looks like, more what you, you're going to see as a student. Start button, news item. I just recently posted a new, a new news item, and that's kind of how you look at it. Uh, the, the main features up here, you'll see, you'll see a news item, uh, calendar over the right, whenever there are, you'll see that when there, uh, once I have deadlines for quizzes and things established and exams, you'll see that over on the right side. Um, that'll be important to pay attention to those due dates. The main thing is going to be the, the content, the grades, and the assessments. So I'm going to change back to faculty role. Now whether this is uh, this is not to be Cal 1, but whether you're Cal 1 or Cal 2, if you go over the content, you see all these folders to the right. I mean you can click on stuff, you're not going to hurt anything. But right here at the top we have syllabus. So I'd start with reading that. Now the open I've already opened up the syllabus files down here for both courses, whether it's Cal 1 or Cal 2. That's, this is the Cal 1 syllabus. This is the Cal 2 syllabus. Well, anyway, I'm not going to go through the entire syllabus. I'm just going to uh, explain the, the grade portion of this, since it's exactly the same for both courses. So it doesn't matter which syllabus I'm using here. Now, I have a, a, a practice list of problems. That's just, you know, obviously for math, you know, practice is going to help your skills. They're not required to turn in. Now, the um, uh, you'll have these what, 10 what's called take-home quizzes. Now, you know, the name quiz could be a little misleading, so I'm going to explain it now. You know, most people would assume quiz is, you know, a live action event, you know, like an exam where you take it on the spot. And, and I've often debated about whether I should change the name of these to like homework set one or homework set two, which I might do at some point. But anyway, they are quizzes, but they are, are more like homework because you have the, the, like it says here in bold, you have the access to the questions in advance. So you will, uh, you'll get, you, you'll have access to those files. You work those problems. And then I'll show you here in a minute when you're ready to submit your answers. What do you do? So that's um, that's why. So you you don't click on the quiz and start taking the quiz. You you open up this PDF file. So both classes will have uh, three exams and a final, three regular exams. So what we're calling the quiz grade here is there's ten quizzes. Drop the lowest four. So those six best ones form a quiz grade average. So if you take three exams and the quiz average, the lowest of, of those four will be dropped. So sometimes students will say, oh, you're dropping the lowest exam. Well, that's only if it's replaced by the quiz average. So it's not an automatic drop. Um, for example, let's say, I'll just make up some numbers here. Let's say your three exam scores were 80, 80, and 80, and your quiz, let's say 80, 80, and 70 and your quiz average was only a 60, well then your quiz average is the one that's dropped, not that lowest exam. So it, it's, it's dropped in the sense of the exam if it's replaced by a quiz, a quiz grade. So I just want to make sure I clarify that. So you can't drop an exam and not do the quizzes both. But you definitely want to do the quizzes. So you see that, uh, so it takes the best three out of four of these, right here. 
and the lowest will be dropped. So they're basically all 25% each. And then the final will be 25% each. And then you can kind of read through all the rest of the stuff at your convenience. But the main thing is then how do we get a grade, read through this, calculator. Always tell the testing centers, always have, you know, why you're not supposed to use anything that does computer algebra. Um, so look through that for both courses. This one's Cal 2. And then obviously, you know, email me if you have any questions on that. So let me go back to uh, D2L. Or it doesn't really matter for either course. So it's the same explanation. But let me go to the quizzes and I'll jump around and look at some other stuff. Um, so the, the quizzes, the PDF files are right here. So you see there they are. There's 10 of them. 1 through 10. So click on these anytime you want to. Open them up. And boom, there you have the questions. So you would go through and you'd work all these until you're ready to submit your answer. Uh, these, uh, each quiz has 10 questions, so it's they're all consistent in that manner. So not like, oh, that quiz had 10, the next one might have 50. No, they have about 10. Uh, the exams are usually about 20 questions each. The final will maybe have a little more. I uh, usually allow more time for that one too, so... So you work these out, like I said, whether it's Cal 1 or Cal 2, same process. Then I'll come over here to Assessments, Quizzes. I may put a, a see I had a password there, which you'll be given the password. Uh, I, I just did that so people, you know, couldn't really open it by mistake, you know, if you have to type in a password. Uh, but obviously, I'll give you those passwords. Now, you see these exams down here. That's the whole idea of the proctored exam. You're not given the password for those. Those will be given to the appropriate testing center, and then they will enter it for you when you're ready to start the test. But quizzes, if I use password, I haven't decided yet. But I have had people open it by mistake and then say, oh, no, I didn't mean to, blah, blah, blah. And I've had to reset it, so I just thought forcing you to put a password in there would would eliminate any accidental openings. So you see all these dates are wrong here, of course. I gotta work on getting all the dates activated for this semester. This was for a recent term. So don't worry about all those dates. They'll, they'll be correct. And then you'll see they'll be, you know, some of them will be due at different times. So you pay attention, obviously, you know, maybe a couple of them as it relates to each exam. They'll be due you know, periodically throughout the course, so pay attention to those due dates. So you'll you'll come in here and you'll uh, when you're ready to open it, you'll click on the quiz. Not much is going to happen now. Of course, I'm sure from your point of view, you're not going to see all this business. It'll bring up the questions, and then you go through based on the work you've already done on the PDF file. You go through and then mark each of your answers. Now, now pay, be careful to make sure, every once in a while, I'll see the uh, order of the questions scramble. So watch for that. So, for example, if you, know, you work a problem on the quiz and you know the answers too, and you're 100% correct, it doesn't matter whether it was the first choice, answer A, on the PDF file versus where it is on the quiz. And that shouldn't happen a lot. So if you know the answers too, you pick two, no matter where it is, obviously. So you'll go through that. And submit it, and it'll tell you your grade, and it'll put your grade uh, over here in the grade book. And so over here is where you'll view your grades. Okay, nothing there yet, but the quizzes will go there automatically. Now, the exam scores, I tend to adjust manually for extra points or whatever. Not the quizzes, just the exams. So when you take the exam, the exams are going to be multiple choice for both classes. It'll, it'll spit out a raw grade, and then I'll let you know what formula I'll be using, and I'll go back and manually type over. So just make a note of what your raw score is so you know it to make sure that I convert it properly when I go through manually. But the quizzes will be kept uh, accurate. 
Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're uh, the grades here, uh, I have it set up to you know where it'll drop the lowest, but don't don't panic if if D2L shows that you have dropped quiz grades because what 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 D2L will do is it's going to drop the lowest four quizzes at any point in time. So if you make hundreds on the first four, it's going to think those four are dropped. And then when you take quiz five and say you made a 90, it'll drop three of the hundreds and a 90. So it'll keep, it will keep going in that progression. But your score is not gone. It's not vaporized. It, by the end, it'll work out. Also, my spreadsheet will have it correct anyway, so it won't matter. So uh, every once in a while I get an email, hey, it's showing my quiz grades are dropped. It's sort of like it's keeping a running total of the dropped four quizzes. So obviously, you know, you have to get past quiz four for the lowest four to actually be dropped. So don't let that bother you. That is not an issue whatsoever. All right, so you keep a track of some grade stuff here. And we've talked about the assessments and everything and the quizzes and the exams. Like I said, you'll go to the testing center and they will enter the password for you. Uh, let's go back to content. So you have content, you have these 10 quizzes. Now let me go back up here. And I have, so I have a syllabus for this class. And I guess I'm sort of shortchanging the Cal 2 folks here. Let me go to their same page there. So obviously look a little different. It's got a syllabus. I've got a ninth edition PDF file of the Larson textbook. You want to use that. I have suggested practice list. Cal 2 has some formulas that aren't given in Cal 1. because There's a lot more formulas in that class. Cal 1, it's important to kind of learn the foundations of the material. So I don't give as much in that class. Um, but uh, this should, let me check both of these. Just now, the uh, when you take a quiz and the exam, you know, a common question I get is, "Hey, I can't see my quiz after I take it." Well, uh, you can't view your quiz grade until about an hour after the the deadline that it was due, not when you take it. I do that just so people don't have necessarily the answer key in advance. Now, of course, if you made 100 on the quiz and you shared that info with somebody, there's nothing I can do about that. But you have to wait until the deadline for the quiz. Now, here's a, uh, I believe I saw this file in both, both these syllabus. Um, let me hide this problem list. Now, I'm, you're you're going to be given that problem list, but there's, uh, I, I may, in case I needed to edit it or something, I'm going to go ahead and hide this for now and then release it a little later. Uh, let's see. Or I don't do this for every exam, but I do it for the final just so you can sort of summarize. You know, actually, you know what? I will leave this here and if I make any changes, I'll just announce it later in the semester. Um, and this is just helps. I don't do that, you know, each exam. I want you to study my reviews. But for the final, I try to pinpoint the topics a little bit to make it less focused, but no more what to focus on. I know some people, I'm sure you'd love it if I told you the questions on every exam. And this is also on the Cal 2 one. Uh, I don't know if I hit it in there or not, but uh, I don't see it in there, but I'll put it in there for you. Same thing, if I don't, depends on whether I change anything, I would just make an announcement about that. So I'll put that in there shortly. Anyway, uh, let's see. So the, uh, so you have, uh, so course content, but, oh, the quiz is what I want to mention. So this tells you how to, you know, enter the quiz, but here's a common question for, you know, when, when the quizzes are uh, over, because, you know, I showed you that little, you know, the quiz and you click on it and you go in and enter your answers. But let's say you've waited till, you know, after the deadline, like you're supposed to, and you go in there and you want to, say you made a 90, you want to see which one you missed. Clicking on that same quiz button or whatever you want to call it, I'll bring this back up, will not do anything. 
because it's you know if that's just to access a quiz you've already taken it means you won't do anything now there's that file I had highlighted here the uh, review quiz and exam submissions this tells you how to do it how to look at your quiz I'm going to tell you real quick though right now so but you can always refer to that if you forget without having to go back and watch this entire video so it's a little tricky even then once you see how to do it uh, it's easy because uh, my instinct would probably have been to click on that quiz right there and think that's going to bring my results up but actually you click down on this drop down uh, arrow except yours will look a little different it should say submissions view submissions or whatever something with less less things on there this is looking at it from my point of view you know as far as if I needed to edit it or do whatever yours won't quite look that way but that's what you do you click that drop down arrow and it'll say something about submissions then it will take you to what you actually submitted versus clicking on that open this up real quick there it is so you click the drop down arrow submissions you only have one attempt, so you'll click on attempt one, and then that, then, then that'll show you. So, okay, so hopefully that'll eliminate any frustration. Back to course content. Uh, this Calc Chat's a nice website. I mentioned that in the syllabus, where if you're doing problems from the book, you can look up, look up solutions for the odd problems. And let's see. All right, lecture notes, both classes. I have all the notes organized so you know exactly what's going to be on each exam. So you see exam one notes. Hey, I know what's going to be on exam one right there. Same thing. Come over here. Let's be fair to the Cal 2 folks here. And you see there's a, there are the summary of the notes for, for your first exam. So they are all uh, summarized by exam. Now the only difference between Cal 2 and Cal 1, uh, Cal 1, all three exams cover all the material. But the way I have Cal 2 set up is, just to not overload the third exam, is there's a little part here at the end, uh, chapter 10, some sections that basically those questions, uh, they're, they're, ta they're handled on a quiz, and they're also on the final, but they're not part of, any of the three regular exams so I didn't want to include them in those folders so you, you go in here uh, so, so those are your lecture notes now I, I am going to plan them for both classes I've added some uh, you know Khan Academy is a good site for videos I've uh, added a few of my own um, Cal 2 I don't have anything yet for that class but I'll just show you Cal 1. So here are your lecture notes. You can go through and find those. Exam reviews. I have videos and PDF files. I don't have videos yet for Cal 2. Um, so look around in there. I've had people email me. Oh, you know, I didn't know you had solutions for these or whatever. But So look at those top two. Sample problems for exam 1. Solutions. To, that doesn't mean like the sample exam problems should have the answers on them. But when I say solutions, that means my worked out solutions or my explanations versus just an answer key. Some of them don't have much work here in Cal 1 at the beginning, but so you see it there. Yeah, so that's what the same thing with Cal 2. You would see my solutions. So there you go. So that's something you want to take a look at when you're preparing for exams. Um, this is my first time to do Cal 2 online, so that's why I don't have as much material for that. So I got them for all the three exams and the final. Of course, you'll be able to use that problem list for the final to narrow down which problems you look at for this one. You don't have to go through every one of them. Just focus on the ones on that list. Now, I have videos for this one. So not only, not only do I have worked out solutions, I have them broken down in batches. That's because I was having trouble when I made these. Uh, thing crashing on me and nothing more frustrating than talking for about an hour and a half and having it crash so I was doing them in segments at a time plus I guess it's faster to find whatever problems you want so so this is actually you know the, the it, 
I'm, I'm explaining verbally what I did on those written solutions to those reviews. So you see example exam 2 basically has 65 problems, but I have them broken up in groups of 13. Like I said, that was just to avoid crashing. I have some lecture videos for this class. I plan on adding more. Once again, nothing's there for Cal 2 yet, but I certainly plan on doing that. It'll be tired of hard to keep up with both, but I'll do my best. Obviously, I'm going to focus, if time is an issue, I will focus on the material that I think is the most difficult for the students. You know, make sure those videos are posted first. Uh, okay, so we've looked at the quizzes. So obviously, if you're looking at Cal 2, you won't see a lot of these video stuff yet. So, so I think that's basically it. So people often ask, well, what should I do? Well, you have that P get going. You have the PDF for the book uh, um, along with my notes. Um, hopefully, you know, some videos to be added would certainly be helpful. I realize that. And then, of course, you know, you can... You know, look even look at the exam reviews as you're going along, that sort of thing. And just sort of kind of combine all those elements together and hopefully you can develop a process of going through this course that uh, works best for you. And let me see, that's probably all we need for now. Think of anything else. So I went through the grading part of the syllabus. And then mainly the, how to kind of proceed with the notes and the exam reviews. So here are the Cal 2 exam reviews. Um, same process with the solutions. And all right, so I believe that will conclude this video. And obviously, please uh, email me if you have any questions. Best of luck, and I hope you have a terrific semester.